on me. We're on. We're live. Dead. Dead. Okay. We're live. We're live.
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome this morning. Um, before we do anything else, I want to take the time to thank you all for keeping Jeannie and her dad in your prayers. Um, he, he died yesterday. And um, so I'm going to be leaving right after church. And if you hear a noise, I just heard it. There's a 14-pound attack poodle who is in a cage <laughs> upstairs in my office because he's going with me. I'm sorry about that. I tried to muffle him. but uh, that So we'll be accompanied by music and a barking dog. <laughs> um, I also want to let you know that uh, we have some more of the concern sheets, the prayer request ones from prisoners. And so I'm going to put those right down here. You can take one or more and uh, uh, use those in your prayer time to, to uh, include them as well. And we have announcements. There are uh, the fridge notes and the information on the Christmas fair on uh, one insert. So please read that carefully. Uh, we're getting down to where uh, it's time for. Every time I uh, say this for the last however long I've been in ministry, back where I'm from, and maybe here too, it's a poinsettia. And there's always some little proper lady who says, it's poinsettia. <laughs> so w whatever it is, there's a sheet for them if you want to reserve one. And then there's also one for the Christmas wreaths too. Oh, <laughs> Susie just uh, went out because she has misplaced an envelope, and apparently it has a lot of money in it. So if you find it, uh, make sure and let her know, because that's going to be on her mind, I think. Uh, if, you're, if you're visiting or haven't been here often, there are cards in the pews we'd like to have you fill out. And uh, if you are sort of a regular attender, we have a sheet we'd like to have you fill out. And you can place those in the offering plate. So today as we gather, may our hearts be full and ready to receive God's love. Let's begin our worship. Remember the love that Christ has for us. May the love of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please join us on our first two songs. He has made me glad and come ye thankful people come. All rise if you are willing or able. <coughs>
Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's, God's love, love is everlasting. Let us come to worship with grateful hearts. We, we come, come with praise to say thank you. For all things great and small, beautiful and awesome, we say thank you. We have come to worship God. I think we have kids today. I've seen heads bopping up and down, so I have something to show you today. You see this? You, know, you can just take a look at it and pass it. It's a, it's a clay bowl, little bowl. Uh, how much do you think it's worth? 5000 10000 Hmm? That's pretty good. I think it's priceless. And it's priceless not because uh, I could sell it. I would never sell it but because of who made it. My son Ian made that when he was 11. And I remember him giving it to me, and he said he modeled it after the uh, early Inca civilization pottery. <laughs> the kid was 11 years old. But I've kept it all this time, and its value, what it's worth, it's priceless to me because of who made it. So the thing I would encourage you to think about is how priceless you are. I mean, you have your gifts and your skills and your abilities, but your real value is in who made you. God made you, and God loves you and values you. And you know what that makes you? Priceless. So remember that this week, okay? Let's pray. God, we thank you for the gift of our lives and our beings. We thank you that you make us and love us and consider us so important. Thank you for blessing us, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Have a great Thanksgiving. <laughs> Good. The lost is found. It's on. Good morning. Uh, we'd like you to take a few moments to look at the screen and remember the people up there that we are praying for. And we will have requests from the congregation in just a moment. We have requests from Roy, Roy Zerasian, for his friend Sh Cheryl T. She has cancer. Prayers for Tim W. from Maryland and Ted for health concerns. Uh, prayers for Ray Lee, who has, she's a young girl that has can is having cancer treatments. <coughs> and pray for Jeannie's, Jeannie Hopalinen's dad, Jim Goldthorpe, who passed away yesterday. And of course, prayers for Pastor Bruce have safe travel to go out to be with her. We pray for Claudette and Rita. Um, they have financial and health issues. And we're praying for the Alvarez Lucas family. Denise is requesting the prayers for the death of their mom, Kelly. Prayers for Chris Hansen um, from Carol and Susie, continuing health issues. And for Beth and Dick Garthia, uh, also health issues. Pray for Sally Holloway, who had had cancer surgery and was in remission, but it has sadly returned, and it's only been a couple of months, so c continue prayers for Sally Holloway. And we pray for a happy Thanksgiving and a safe Thanksgiving for everybody. And if you have to travel, be careful. Drive slow. And thank you. There was uh, once a boss in a big company who, even though it was the weekend, was having an emergency. So uh, he called one of his employees, and he didn't pick up his cell phone. So he called the landline, 
And after it rang a couple times, he heard this little soft voice say, Hello? And he said, um, Is your daddy home? And he said, the voice said, Yes. He said, Well, could I speak to him? No. So then he asked, well, for any adult, he said, is your mommy there? And she, the voice said, yes. He said, may I talk to her? And the little voice said, no. And uh, he figured out that the young child wouldn't be left alone, so somebody was there, even if mom and dad couldn't come to the phone. And he said, is there anyone there besides you? And the little voice said, yes. The policeman? And he said, the policeman, well, can I talk to him? No. He's busy. What's he doing? He's talking to mommy and daddy and the fireman. The fireman? So now he was really concerned. And when he started to talk to the little voice, he heard this. <laughs> and he said, what's that? And the little voice said, it's a helicopter. He said, what is the helicopter doing there? He said, they're looking. He said, well, what are they looking for? And the little voice said, for me. <laughs> Sometimes you can start one way and you get way off the track. It happens a lot of times. And that's one of the great values of, of prayer. Would you pray with me? Lord, we come today to bring our sacrifice of thanks and praise for all you've given us. You've filled our lives with much that is good, food to eat, shelter in which to dwell, families to love, sisters and brothers in faith. We're grateful for all of them, Father. You've made and placed us in a world that's wonderful to all of our senses. You make us one in the human family and bind us together as Christ's body. And yet, Father, we are so uniquely made. This is a world of all kinds of people, and we're grateful for it, black and white and brown and yellow, tall and short and young and old. Your world is brimming with people, with joys and sorrows, those who make us laugh, and those who wipe away our tears. For this time of worship and for the many things in which we are thankful, we give you praise. And we ask God, gracious God, that you would continue in us those blessings we often overlook. We thank you for children who laugh and cry and interrupt and learn and share. We thank you for dogs that won't stop barking for love, for children who love to be tickled and grow up too quickly. We thank you for those in our lives, O oh God, who even though they know us, still say I love you. For family and friends who support us in times that are good and in times that definitely are not. We thank you for mechanical things, Father, even when they go on the fritz. Remind us, Lord, that from your hand there is more than we could ever use or expect. Gift upon gift, all without condition. We thank you, Father, for the gathering of the harvest, the harvest of praise and goodness, all supplied by you. And above all, Lord, we praise you for the unity you give us and call us to engage in and the joy we find in the great kindnesses you show us through Jesus Christ, our loving Lord, who taught us to pray together this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Now as a sign of our gratitude, let us give as we are able to the work of Christ Church. And please join us in singing, We Gather Together. Gracious, loving Father, we are so grateful for all you give to us, and we're grateful for the opportunity to return some of it to you. May this offering be used to further your kingdom and proclaim your name and show your love. We ask it in the name of our Lord, your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Morning. Good morning. Today I'm going to read from Psalm 107, verse 4 through 9. <coughs> Some of you were lost in the scorching desert, far from a town. You were hungry and thirsty and about to give up. You were in serious trouble, but you prayed to the Lord, and He rescued you. Right away, He brought you to a town. You should praise the Lord for His love and for the wonderful things He does for us, o- for all of us. To everyone who is thirsty, he gives something to drink. To everyone who is hungry, he gives good things to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. There are a lot of things that you learn right away <coughs> when you're new parents. Um, our oldest, Dylan, was uh, very verbal and talkative. Took after his mother. Um, so we we always wanted to uh, give him opportunity to show off in front of other people. He was very verbal, talked at a really early age. And so one time at a family gathering for Thanksgiving, We said to him, uh, so Dylan, tell everybody uh, what we're going to be doing this Thursday. And he went. So we said, well, you know, uh, we're going to celebrate, you you know. So he said, okay, here's what it is. We're going to take something and put it in a pan, and we're going to put it in the oven and bake it till it's golden and brown. Do you know what that is? He said, the baby Jesus. (laughs) 
they say that lawyers never ask a question that they don't know the answer to. It doesn't work with kids because even if they know the answer and you know the answer and you know what, you don't know what they're going to say. So that's the way it works. That's what I think of in Thanksgiving. I, I feel a little funny saying this uh, to give you a little bit of a history lesson since you're right on top of Plymouth Rock, but uh, it could just be for me and you can listen if you want. It was over four centuries that they landed coming to a place for prosperity, the prosperity that we enjoy, we sometimes take for granted. But according to the history, that first year, they dug seven times as many graves as they built homes. Half of the number died the first year. And the second ship that came across that was supposed to bring food and relief to the settlers, when they arrived, they had brought uh, three dozen more people. So there were more people to f feed and not really any additional provisions. And yet when you read in the book, it's totally, it gets my heart every time. There's this picture in my mind of William Brewster, who after they had had their dinner, which was uh, clams and a glass of water, he stood up and spent time to thank God for, quote, the abundance of the sea and the treasures hid in the, hand, in the sand. They had so little. What did they have to be thankful for? They knew and we should know that gratitude is something we control. It's a great attitude, a great spirit. And it's one of the greatest Christian virtues. Just like ingratitude is one of the most hideous sins. Thankfulness is a main mark of Christians, of genuine Christianity. Now, you probably know this, but I want to remind you, in the years after that first Thanksgiving, they got in the habit before they served the food of putting five kernels of corn on each plate. And then they would go around, fathers, mothers, children, guests, and they would each pick up a kernel of corn and tell what they were thankful for. And the reason they did it was early on in the pilgrim's time, there were many days when their daily food allotment was five kernels of corn. So I guess all I want to say is sometime this week, whether you do it literally or figuratively, Take out your five kernels and think about what you are grateful for. But be careful about that. I, I have a suggestion, and that is be careful in your gratitude. Because if, if you thank God for enough money to meet your needs, you're kind of implying the person who doesn't have enough money may have a criticism with God or it may be something about them that's less than. And you don't mean it, but that's what it is. If we thank God for a harvest and overflowing cupboards, what about the world that's two-thirds of its people go to bed hungry at each night? Is that God's fault? Is it some worthiness problem they have? If I thank God for the health that I enjoy, what about the person whose health is broken? So the answer to those questions is no, that's not it. But if you look back to the forefathers with their families dying left and right, literally suffering from starvation and disease, they took time, they took time to give thanks. In some ways it's strange, but in other ways that's the key. Coming to the understanding that the greatest reason for thanks is the spiritual blessing that comes to all people. So you can be grateful in good health or poor health, good harvest or poor, plenty or hunger, distress or in blessing. And here's another thing that I have been thinking about. There has never been a time in these last five years that I was grateful or thankful 
that my sons died. But I have been thankful every day that God has walked with me on that journey. Every step I take, he takes with me. Every time I fall, he picks me up. Every time I stumble, he puts his arm around me. That's the source of gratitude. Not things going my way, but God going my way with me. It makes all the difference in the world, I think. So Paul, to the Philippians, says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Paul knew what it was like to rejoice in tough times. His life was not a picnic. So it's in tough times, in easy times, good and bad. We can choose to be grateful. We can. I read a story once uh, about a man and a woman in, in their church who gave this sizable contribution to the church in memory of their son who was killed in Vietnam. And when they announced this sizable donation in church, there was a woman that turned to her husband and said, we should give the same amount for our son. And I said, the husband said, what? what? Our son wasn't killed. He's alive. And the wife said, that's the point. Let's give it as an expression of our gratitude that they ever had their son and the gratitude that we still have ours. I heard a man speaking one time, a, a pretty powerful preacher. He, he was the minister of a big church. And he was talking about how he got to that situation. And he said he really couldn't find any friends and he didn't have any purpose when he was a kid. So somehow, for some reason, in some way, he ended up going to this church. And he said, the first time that the minister ever said, if you would like to come down um, to the altar, we'll pray with you. And he said, he went. And he said it was so helpful for him, he regularly went. He went down sometimes uh, 10, 15, 20 times in a year. And he said what impressed him about that was he had the need to go and nobody ever said, when is Larry going to grow up? Why do we have to watch this stupid kid go up there every single Sunday? He said that never happened. He said every time I went up, there were people that came with me. They prayed for me and they prayed with me. Not the same people every time, but someone was always there. I never went by myself. He said, I'm paving my way to heaven. And now his congregations benefit from that love and support too. Because he can talk about someone who's at the center of history, Jesus. Someone who's the way when we lose ours. Paving our way, preparing our hearts. There was this guy, there always is, um, named Fred. And Fred arrived at the pearly gates, and as he entered, there was an angel there with a clipboard. And he couldn't figure out why the angel didn't already know this, but he took his name and uh, his address and his cell phone number, and he took some other particulars. And finally the angel said, Fred, here's what I want to do to speed this up. Can you just tell me about a time in your life when you did a purely unselfish thing for someone else. He thought about it for a minute, and he said, yeah, I, I've got one. I, I think you like this one. I've got one. He said, one day I was walking along the street, minding my own business, and I came upon this little old lady who was being grabbed and beaten by a motorcycle gang member who was trying to take her purse. She said, he, he was a scary guy, he said. He was tattooed, all leather, chains hanging off him. He must have been, he said, six foot six, probably weighed 300 pounds. And he was just smacking this lady. So he said, what I did was I ran up to his motorcycle and kicked it over to distract him. Then I kicked him real hard in the shins and said to the lady, run and get help. So she took off. 
Then he said, I hauled off and hit that guy right in the gut with my fist. The angel looked at Fred and said, now that is a story. I'm impressed. When did that happen? He looked at his watch and said, about two and a half minutes ago, actually. <laughs> We're paving, preparing, looking, working, but mostly bathing in gratitude. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come and take you with me. Thankfulness is a virtue. It's the key. Thankfulness should be the very essence of Christian life. The psalmist said it this way, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. When it's easy, but when it's hard, when it's good, and when it's bad. There was a uh, preacher of, well, he died, I'm going to say, about 100 years ago. And this is what he wrote on gratitude. Life without thankfulness is devoid of love and passion. Hope without thankfulness is lacking in fine perception. Faith without thankfulness lacks strength and fortitude. And then he said, every virtue divorced from thankfulness is maimed and limps along the spiritual road. For spiritual health, thankfulness has to be a part of our living, and it's a choice. The thing that I have discovered, I should have known it a long time ago, but it just becomes deeper and deeper, is that we make choices, and we do things because we will ourselves to do them. That's one of the great misconceptions of, uh, I think, of, of the world, the scripture world, is we don't understand all the time what the scripture writers were talking about when they say, love the Lord with all your heart. If you don't get that right, you go around loving the Lord when you feel like it. But for the ancient Greeks and the Hebrews, the heart was the source of your will and your reason, not your feeling. So to love God with all your heart means all the time, every day, every way. We can do that. God calls us to do it. Paul said to the Colossians, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as one body and its members, you were called to peace. And then he said, and always be thankful. I have many things to be grateful for, and I've figured it out once every four Thanksgivings. I'm grateful for a Lions victory on a Thursday afternoon. I don't know about this year. Uh, they're doing well, but that's the problem. But be thankful. You can choose it in good times and bad. So maybe this week, maybe on Thanksgiving Day, maybe with your family, maybe on your own, take out your five kernels of corn, literally or figuratively, and think about five things that you're thankful for. I'm guessing that once you do that and open that floodgate, it'll be five times 50 times 500. God has made us to be people of praise and has given us much to be praise, praising. Let's remember that. It's from our hearts, our will, our desire, our commitment. Have a great Thanksgiving. Amen. Please join us on our last song, Blessed Be Your Name. All right.
God's glory in this world is taken out into the world by you. You reflect God's glory. You reflect God's light. So go and shine like the sun today, tomorrow, and every day because God has blessed you to be able to do it. Go now in peace and comfort and in love and go in God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's people said, Yeah, really. Wow. <laughs>